Namaste, welcome, and howdy. I'm Matt. And I'm Rashmi. And we just watched Me Atohum. The film is about the life of Atoh, the former prime minister of India. And it was a biopic right around two hours, maybe just over, but uh, fairly short by Bollywood standards. So uh, what, were your, what were your overall thoughts? I absolutely loved Ankar Tripathi in this role. I think every character I've ever seen him in any movie, he just throws out of the park. And I think he played uh, this character just flawlessly. Hmm. So one thing I'm curious about is, mm -hmm. uh, do, do you have much, much, um, I, I guess, have you experienced much of the, the real uh, Atom? Um, did you, you heard much of him speaking or anything? No, I haven't. So he was a prime minister of India in the late 90s uh, or kind of early 2000s. And I left India when I was six. So I was really young kind of when he came into, into so and it was kind of towards the end of his life. But like mm -hmm. I was super young. So I don't know personally that much about him. Okay, I'm curious about his portrayal, and maybe someone can drop in the comments what they thought, whether whether it was faithful or not. Well, one thing I was I found really interesting was actually going all the way to the end credits. Actually, we have to hear some of his uh, real speeches, and um, I, I didn't understand most of the words, but I actually found his manner of speaking really really enthralling. It sounded sounded almost poetic. There was a certain um, certain rhythm to it that was uh, almost mesmerizing. I thought um, one thing maybe only artists or poets can maybe put forward. Right, so I'm curious if uh, if this actor really captured the essence of that. Um, I'm curious to know if people what people thought about it, if he really really lived up to that or not. Did you think he maybe didn't? Is that where you were you were heading with that? I'm curious. I think I feel like we got so little of him as as Atul, you know. Okay. Like the the orator. Like the poet. Like the the orator, right? Like the parts of him speaking in Congress, I think were probably my favorite part with him, right? Mm -hmm. He really had just like like Cicero vibes, right? Standing up and just kind of being poetic, and everyone was, you know, captured on every word, right? Right. And I feel like we could have could have maybe gotten more of that because again, that was that was kind of what I like the okay. most, and a lot of it was him, kind of walking around, right, and you know, looking worried. I, I felt like when maybe they could have captured more of the, the real him. I think you see this battle of him being an artist and a politician, and there's a huge. Um, Kind of believe that, you, like, you know, I grew grew up like hearing that, like, an artist should never really be in politics, <laughs> and a you know, a politician is maybe not an artist, right? They're right. two very different vibes of people, and you kind of see him struggle in this internal battle. And there's so many times where he's like, maybe I shouldn't have done politics, and you know, he's like, maybe I shouldn't be here. And like, his love for his country, like, overshines everything for him, including him being a poet. Hmm. And I really like the fact that he harnessed being an artist, being a poet, into his political sort of agenda. Right, yeah, like the, the speech is kind of kind of capturing people and, and building support. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting, the first scene where they're like, you got to get elected. So he goes to, I guess, represent some some small district and uh, immediately you know gives them the, the speech and gets <laughs> elected pretty much without having to put in much effort, it looks like, if uh, were to believe sort of the, the way it was portrayed. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was probably that easy in real life. <laughs> right. But I think the other characteristic that really shines through in this is as an artist, you're maybe more used to kind of losing a lot of times. You know, a lot of people are maybe like, oh, you're just an artist. You're not that important. Like, you know, it's people's notions, right? I think that lends itself really well to politics where you do have a lot of downfalls. Um, I do know, like, during his reign as prime minister, India was in a really volatile period, which right. we kind of talked a little bit about in the trailer that we, we saw. But even throughout his 40-year career, this guy chooses to remain celibate, basically, yeah. uh, to pursue his passion for poetry, but also for the love of his country. I guess overall, I guess it took, it felt like the movie, it took a long time for him to really become a film, right? Mm -hmm. um, which... I thought I thought the first part especially was was a little bit slow. It really took a while for him to, you know, be that guy, right? That we we want to see, you know. Um, so I was I, I found think, that part a little bit slow for me. Yeah, I I can see where that comes from. I think uh, the story that they're really trying to highlight there is you don't become Atul overnight, right? This is a forty year in the making process, and a lot of people, you know, maybe they're like, oh well, of course he's you know prime minister. Uh, it was so easy for him, but there's this entire journey and this entire life that he spends doing all this work without knowing if he's not guaranteed to become prime minister and um i did not realize um 
he was kind of around and you know he did the the indian flag thing when the british were ruling <laughs> and then um you know losing gandhi g losing indira gandhi like you know there was just a, a lot of political moments that i like i just did not know that you know he was he was around for i mean obviously he was now that i like think about it logically uh but i've just like never like paid attention to that part yeah i thought uh, i personally didn't find his uh his story as portrayed by the film that compelling mm -hmm. he's obviously a very interesting character the idea of starting as a poet and becoming the guy that develops the atomic bomb for India, right? And yeah. becomes PM is fascinating. I, I just, I don't know if they really did enough for that to be, to really draw me in. I think maybe the film bit off a little bit more than it could chew. Could, could chew. I, uh, I don't, didn't think I would ever say this about a Bollywood film, but I think it actually should have been longer. Um, if we compare it to something like Oppenheimer, I mean, that was three hours long and it focused on a very, mostly on a very specific couple parts of Oppenheimer's life, right? Mm -hmm. This one tried to tell his entire life story in two hours. And I think as a result, we got to see, they didn't really get to focus on any one thing very much. Okay, yeah, no, I can definitely see what, what you're saying there. I think, just to really talk a little bit more about, or build on your point, I think maybe what went through his mind being a poet and this almost intense desire to build the nuclear weapon mm -hmm. Right. right, it's very drastically different. Like his love for his country, he's a poet, and he wants to build. And these guys were talking about scenes about nuclear bombs since the sixties. <laughs> like this wasn't something that like he went into office and he was like all cleared. For <laughs> but that, that's how weapons. it was portrayed, though. Is my my problem, right? Like we saw in the trailer, they say, "Hey, we're gonna touch on." Uh, the trailer says we're gonna hit this and this and this and this, and it's gonna be great. Like uh, was it po po Pokrum? Was the yes, name? correct. Um, Pokrum was basically one minute in this film, and we saw a whole film dedicated to just the. Uh, just yeah, the entry behind that right yeah. like there's from so, on you yeah, yeah yeah there's so much more they could have done i think to make different parts of it interesting i wonder if it should have been focused on maybe a smaller portion of his life or been a longer film but uh there was i don't know so many times when there's the tension was just about to start and then it ends immediately you know there's tension yeah, in pakistan and we see the jets flying over and uh then okay we, we won and the movie's over like uh so it, it really builds this excitement and kind of kind of lets you down i think was my my biggest problem with the film almost like glossed over it yeah and then they spent all this time on scenes that maybe just weren't that necessary right right like i, I maybe would have edited more of it out and then wanted a, a more kind of conflict story where i'm like well like what really happened when like you know when dr abdul kalam was you know and, and poker and you right. know uh with this atomic bomb or this nuclear weapon and like you know what is there and like they they almost just gloss over yeah. it there's like a, a, a puja they're doing and they're like india is now a nuclear state right? <laughs> yeah i feel like they started from the perspective of okay we have to check off all these things from his life right mm -hmm. and uh i don't think they cut any of them from it and i think it really shows it's just like bam 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 one, one scene to the next one thing um i really like to see in my movies is i know i'm watching a movie i'm not watching a documentary like, and I'm very clear right. that, like, I'm, I'm going here to watch a movie. So everything I see may not be, like, 100% actual factory, like, history, right? Like, this is not a documentary. This movie always almost tried to seem like a documentary. It did, yeah. Or so sometimes you'll see, like, a documentary that has, like, little, like, half scenes of drama that yeah. goes back to being a documentary. It did feel almost, almost like that, yeah. And I really would have liked to have seen kind of more relationships. They do bring in a lot of uh, political party members. Um, into the scene, which I've heard growing up, I don't know that much in detail, because they were obviously like, huge in the 90s. They all had their own cabinets and their own ministry. So, but as somebody who's not that familiar with Indian politics and Indian history, it was almost a little bit hard to follow. Right, yeah, I, I agree. Um, it was probably, probably even tougher for me. I think there's a couple moments, sure. especially where I was like, wait, what was the connection? Like there's one scene where there's, uh, there's a riot. I think there's a couple scenes like that, but one scene in particular where there's there's sort of a, a riot and people get, get shot. And it was really unclear what exactly happened or what the, what the cause was, right? Right. Uh, there were also a lot of um, words that were like written in Hindi mm -hmm. and I don't know how to read written Hindi. So I learned Hindi by watching Bollywood movies. So I, I, can, I, I can understand it and I can speak it but I can't, I can't understand you know, what's written or I can't read it. So a lot of those scenes that focused on those moments, I was yeah, like- They would go to the newspaper, right? Yeah. And you're supposed to see the headline. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I know this is important. I wanna know what this is, but like, how am I gonna know what this is? Yeah, I think just as a, an aside too, I think the, 
the kind of making it for foreign audiences could have been better on this one, right? Like a lot of times, if you have something like that, they'll be they'll have kind of in uh, like in, in titles, like hey, what what is it what it says here, and they they really didn't do that. Some of the subtitles were actually a little bit off too. Like oh, they really? misspelled definitely at one point. Oh. Um, and he kept addressing um, Indira Gandhi, right? Mm-hmm. And it kept misgendering her in the the translations, right? It kept saying he, him, and Mister Speaker. So a few, maybe a few years ago at this point, we did see a biopic with Chakri, mm-hmm. which I yeah. thought was really well done. And so kind of cross comparing how we portray, so how we kind of saw mm-hmm. Chakri's biography in this. I feel like Chakri's had a lot more kind of heart and soul yeah. in, into the whole movie as opposed to this one. I feel like it was just, it was missing like what makes Atul like yeah. Atul, right? Like I, I wanted to see like that, that guy who comes out to fight for India when they're when they're under attack i want to see that guy who fights with the bureaucrats basically to make sure that india is able to have nuclear weapons like i want to see that fight as as a poet kind of struggling and like right that and i feel like like this one missed on it whereas i think chakra really highlighted because chakra is also a cartoon artist um who goes on to yeah he's an artist who goes on to rule probably you know mumbai's most famous political reign um and has a really beautiful and of actually richer story and i think the movie portrayed that really well hmm. i think the movie maybe missed the mark here when atul bihari Vajpayee does have a really great story to be told here right yeah yes yeah, so i think maybe maybe a little more focus um maybe focusing more on the interesting parts would have made it a bit more engaging um I saw, I think, about the, the dozenth uh, different portrayal of Indira Gandhi that I've seen in Hollywood Okay, films. Let, let's, like, talk about Indira Gandhi, <laughs> She's okay? She's everywhere. <laughs> She's everywhere, but what I genuinely saw was Corella from 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> like, the way, like, her hair was Patrician and this, I was like, we're talking about Indira Gandhi, or we're talking about Corella from 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost found her to be the most interesting character in the film. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, definitely portrayed, portrayed as a villain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm curious if uh, she is universally portrayed as a villain, or mm-hmm. if it's more of uh, more of a gray area. That was definitely the portrayal she got here, anyway. Yeah, which again makes sense from BJP's perspective, right. right? Because you know they were really fighting Congress for decades on end to become like an official political party. So I do see that her reign I mean, was interesting. I don't want to get into the politics of it because that's not what this yeah, is Yeah, it's hard not to in a film that's about the founding of a political party, <laughs> yeah. but uh, <laughs> is what it is, I suppose. Uh, correct. I did, um, I don't know who played her, but I really liked her acting. Yeah, I think yeah, there was like was some good. potential that I was like, oh, I'd like to see in more movies. Yeah, for sure. What did you think about his best friend? His best friend. Um, so that, that was the guy, his, his friend for 40 years. His name correct. was Lal? Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, would, would you literally think of it as as red? <laughs> that's that's all I, I could that's keep a... saying. <laughs> yeah, you could. It's not, not. I mean, yeah, sure. But I think his name was Lala G or something. Like Lala okay. G. I was almost wondering if that was the title, but uh, <laughs> anyway. No, um, yeah. Well, we see him throughout. He, the acting is fine. I didn't. He didn't make much of an impact on me, though, personally. Correct, and I agree with that. And that left me questioning: Why was he in this movie? Like the acting was fine, but right. I'm like, is there an integral part? Like, does he stab in the back? Like, is he like, is he his confidant? Are they like fighting through things? And I'm sure that's probably what happened in real life. I just didn't see that on the big screen. All I remember from him, maybe it's the spoilers, but also, I mean, there's a biopic, so I mean, if you <laughs> if you follow it along, like you know. But like, the only thing that he like really makes an impact on in the movie seems to be that one scene where like he announces his run for a prime minister without telling the guy who is about to leave the political party right <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder how much truth there really was to that like right, it was forced yeah. upon him like I, i'm curious if that was actually historically historically accurate but i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i agree um so this director uh we've seen him before i don't know if you recognize which movie he's kind of done but uh he was in Tapar, uh which had Tapsi Pannu in it um and it's that movie where um, she gets slapped by her husband at a party and oh so... i i saw i think i think the tail end of that I, okay. I didn't watch the whole thing okay so he's there and then he's in tanaji uh the unsung warrior so we've seen him in a couple of things uh but maybe not in like a like a whole full-on kind of so this is probably my first movie where i've seen him kind of do a like a political biopic oh i see uh, as a kind of as a director 
So, all in, I will say, I really enjoyed the songs. Yeah, uh, I think especially the, uh, there's one you hear when it's, when it's like, you know, India is kind of, kind of succeeding, right? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that was, that, that one in particular, I like. Yeah, and I actually looked up um, who the singers were. So there's Pyle Dave and Os Kailash Kerr, who are both phenomenal singers. Really? And they're really big in Bollywood. Um, so I think the entire soundtrack, I was like, I don't know if this is the kind of soundtrack that goes out to become, like, commercially successful. Right. And I don't I don't think this will be playing at all the clubs back in India at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I could recognize uh, a couple of the voices, actually, in the, um, really? some of the songs. Yeah. There's, wow, that's awesome. Uh, there's a famous song. I probably can't sing the words exactly, but it sounded, it sounded almost like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I um I really like to, I, all the songs. I think this is these are songs that are kind of going to go on my playlist. Mm -hmm. Um, and same like Takre, like I really like Takre's um kind of like beat song, like main song. There wasn't one for Uppo, which I was mm -hmm. like, where's like really? my like you know in Takre it's like Aya Aya mm -hmm. Aya Takre like and you're like super pumped for it. Yeah, I feel like this song didn't have like an Uppo kind of song. Huh. That's interesting. I, I guess maybe this is kind of the portrayal as being kind of this uh, this humble guy. Maybe they didn't want to have it be like Suri Avanchi, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I could definitely see that. And like I said, this is not the kind of song is going to be pumping out at the club at midnight, right? This is more of like you're you're kind of studying, and then this nice song kind of like comes into the background, and you're like, oh, this this actually sounds really nice. Yeah. So I, I really like that. Um, I don't know if you missed certain points. There were almost points where I was like. Try to find my remote to pause. Yeah. <laughs> like when, uh, I mean, when he goes from like the party being in a low end to the next scene, basically he's, he's prime minister. I was like, was there some connection I missed here? It seemed like there should have been some big series of events where he's driving and pushing and then, then he succeeds, but it was very jarring. He goes from low point to, hey, you're the prime minister now. Kind of seemingly all at once. That was, that was interesting. Yeah, that was, I agree. I was like, I don't know if we, I don't know if I missed something too. I don't know if that's just how the director decided to put that scene in there. Uh, I'm like, how is he not campaigning? Like, I, I was a little bit, little bit lost in it. This is actually one thing I would love to ask my dad. I think, um, the, the maybe that's the way the political parties work. Yeah. Is maybe where I was like, did I lose kind of track of that? I've never voted in an Indian political party election, so I don't know about that. But there's also another scene, which I don't know if you caught, but um, so Indira Gandhi, um. And and her her party had raised the prices on petrol, which is gas, right. and um, the Indians were were starving because food was so expensive. Right. And uh, uh, comes in a, a bull cart, yeah, because he refuses to like <laughs> spend money on gas. Yeah, that that, that was kind of cool. He he ex he did explain the significance of that to Congress, right? That was yeah. <laughs> I, that was that's something I got to kick out of sort of the, the symbolism, <laughs> sort of putting Congress <laughs> in their place a little bit. That was that was great. That that was one scene where the, the real Ethel does does start to shine through. Yeah, I I like really like that, and I was like, this is this is really good. I think this is a movie where Pankaj Tripathi is is basically trying to single handedly keep the movie alive. <laughs> Right, like he's he's giving like his best all out. Yeah. I genuinely think if he had a little bit more direction and guidance on the whole thing, the movie would have, you know, sh shown up a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. There were some plots, like you said, that I just think fell flat. Right. Where I really would have liked to have seen, generally, like a little bit more time in his office, like, like what happened, like what yeah. were the kind of issues, like how were they handling it? Yeah, it actually it opens with him in with his cabinet in the office, you know saying, you know, this is what happened with Pakistan, this is what we're going to do, right? And more of that, right, I definitely would have yeah. been good. They hook us in with that and then maybe don't fully deliver. Well, and then the other part is, so then it goes into a flashback, right, where they talk about, like, you know, he's hanging out with his family um, and his family scene, and then his dad comes with him to law school. And then it seems like, you know, they, they complete law school and then he goes on his own way. And you, like, never see the family again. And I was like, That's true. I, I get that maybe that, like, happened in real life, but, like, in, in a movie where, like, there, your time is at a premium, right? Like you have two right. to three hours to like basically make your point. I was like, okay, like we could have cut all of that out in like, you know, six minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then spend more time showing to me like what happened at BJP when Indira Gandhi declared emergency, right? right? Like, yeah, like for two years, people went to jail. We're like, well, like I understood that like destroyed BJP, but like, tell me more about that. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was fascinating. And then we, you just kind of move on after that and that was that, that was a little bit disappointing yeah and then um, it seems like there, the people from his ministries that are like yeah i became a lawyer in jail i'm like <laughs> yeah. oh, this is his story like what right? <laughs> i 
like I, I want to know about that like I want to know like you know what it feels to be politically repressed like that's the story I want to see where he's helping these people he's turning them out like that's and I felt like it was just lacking in that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I know there's a story. Like, I guarantee you there's a story there. I just felt like it didn't come through on. Yeah, yeah. I know this could easily have been a trilogy focusing on just the, just the most interesting parts. Yeah. I, I actually, actually, one thing I was thinking during the film, it was almost more of a history of India sort of uh, from um, you know post-World War II India to, to modern times. Almost more of a history of India than a biopic of Atul was, was kind of one feeling that I had. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. And I think as Bollywood, I mean, which is already the largest, you know, cinema in the world, seeing a lot more people from America, from other parts of the world are getting interested in Bollywood. So from Indian movie directors in the way things are portrayed, I want to see a little bit more guidance for people who know nothing. Like if I brought you to watch this movie without you having seen any Bollywood movie before, I think you would be pretty lost <laughs> and without yeah. India, right? Um, whereas if I want to show you, like, you know, if someone comes up to me on the street and goes, like, show me a Bollywood movie, I'm probably going to, like, three idiots, right? Of course. Right? <laughs> or I'm going to, if they're a girl, I'm going to Kabi Kushi Kabi Ga. Right? So, like, there's these very few movies, right? I'm not bringing them to watch Atul, because this is, like, so drastically different. Right. And, but I could generally show them 12th Quail. Yeah. And I think that is a story that anybody could relate to. Yeah, I, I think this one definitely has a particular audience in mind is probably more for Indians and especially people that are familiar with uh with, with Atul right mm -hmm. I'm sure uh I'm sure got a kick out of it yeah I feel like if I had brought my mom and my dad along they would have been like oh my gosh it's it's you know it's Jawaharlal Hal Nehru it's Gandhi <laughs> it's uh you know now it's Indira Gandhi so it's first Gandhi it was Mahatma Gandhi and now it's Indira Gandhi <laughs> um you know and so they I think they would have had a lot more kind of freak out moments than maybe I did because the cabinet members like I was like that's Shushma Rajaraj, like, you know, it's Jaitley. Like, I'm like, I, I've heard of these people, but I mean, I don't know anything beyond that. I'm not in the political, like, realm. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, overall thoughts. Uh, if you're a fan of the real life Atul, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy this. The film's definitely made for you. Um, if you're not familiar, you might, you might struggle a little bit. Um, overall, a decent portrayal of Atul, even though the story did lag at places, I think could have been more focused. One of my favorite parts, and this is like so small, but I really, really liked it, was uh, they're in the movie theater, mm -hmm. and the guy with the concessions is going around, and uh, instead of popcorn, he's handing out samosas. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, where can I find a movie theater like this in America? I need a movie theater that brings me samosas, <laughs> along with my popcorn. <laughs> that would have been nice. We yeah. did, we did, uh, we were fortunate enough to have some momos beforehand, so. Uh, that was nice, but yeah, samosas would have really taken it to the next level. Yeah, and it actually happens in movie theaters in India. You can definitely order like a samosa. Uh, any closing remarks? Do let us know what we should watch. We have a whole weekend coming up in front of us. We I have a few things on the radar, but if you guys have any suggestions for anything you recommend we watch, maybe that can be done in two or three hours, drop us a comment below. Definitely. As always, thanks for watching.